friends, this is Becca. Welcome to Embrace Eternity, a podcast co-hosted by myself and Cass, where we talk about Mass Effect, Bioware, video games, TV, and whatever else tickles our fancy at the moment. So join us and embrace eternity. This is part Jenna. two. Yeah, yeah. Can you say it again? <laughs> <laughs> this is part two of our like overall review of Mass Effect Andromeda. We're still not touching on characters. That's going to be after this. But this is like... This is Andromeda. Nothing but Andromeda. Yep. <laughs> All, Andromeda. Of- <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> All of our feelings on display. Yep. And the first one was a little more glib than I wanted it to be. But Same. the good news is that I have, well, I have a bad list, but I have a good list too. Um, and my good list is longer than the bad one. That's saying I'm something. That's I'm clapping. Good. I'm clapping. Well, I chose to exclude some stuff that I thought was just stupid to talk about because we here at Embrace Eternity aren't here to talk about things that have been talked about a billion times Mm -hmm. like uh, facial animation it ain't great who cares and what what is there to say yawn i don't have anything to say i wish it was better can't do anything about it um and we already kind of covered the thing i cared about which was the story not being good (laughs) um in my opinion so we're gonna we're gonna move on and we got some stuff left to talk about before we get to uh my epic list of likes and dislikes and i don't know if becca has an epic one as well but i'm sure she has many things to contribute i can pull some stuff out of my ass it'll be fine yeah she can do it i believe in you well let's talk about something light um which is the armor uh what did you think of our armor designs were you looking beautiful did you what did you go hot pink i didn't Actually, I went with some purples and stuff for Dolly, but uh, for Rosemary, she wore, like, mostly khaki and, like, army green and shit. Um, The armor I used was... I wrote it all down. I did... I'm looking through my notes. Okay, I used the Maverick Ambusher armor from Rosemary because it has the little flap up top, and I thought that was cool. It had all the little compartments and shit. thought that was cute. And then... For Dolly, I used the Helios Defender armor, and I crafted it, and so I named it Kila Salai Motherfucker, because it looks kind of uh, Gorian. That's wonderful. I love that one, too. The Blueberry Helmet is my favorite, mm-hmm. which is what I call the, mm-hmm. the Helios time. Um, I didn't really give everybody, like, the same armor all the time, um, but uh, I think, other than the fact that I loved using the helm... It was weird on some people, which even though they're the same model, um, like when I had the bob and I used the uh, Angara armor with the little thing, mm-hmm. you know, the little, you know, the little thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't look as good, but when you have a pony, it looks cute. So I highly suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> good tip. Um, my favorite armor was probably I used the one you talked about with the little um. The little flap as well, quite a bit. Because mm-hmm. that was cute. It and was. I really did. I Other than the whole not looking good with the bob, I did love the Angara armor. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Because it was kind of poofy. You know, those sleeves that are like bubbly. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that. I really did. And I like that we could wear that. Uh, I wish there was more options, though. But um, I never used N7 armor. Me either. I was like, fuck this. It felt kind of wrong since you're not an N7. You're not N7. And I was like, we're what not Shepard. I just, it felt wrong. I didn't like that. Uh, Yeah, it's not good. And it makes no sense. And that's that's the truth. <laughs> um, But I, I like the customization. Something like... If we talk about casual wear, I was kind of bothered by the fact that you can't, um, at that scarf, uh, you kind of can't um, color that a different color from whatever the other option is, pants or something, which is a weird combo. I wish It's that like we could... half of the pants and the scarf. And I remember just being yeah. like, why the hell would I want to have like a pink scarf and then my ass It's not be a good accent. Too. <laughs> like, I know. Um, no. It, it's supposed to be an accent, which tells me again that nobody who has ever 
at all been into fashion fashion or yeah hadn't made this so that's unfortunate i wish the um and they did actually talk about adding more outfits and cosmetic stuff i swear didn't they i don't know for future stuff i I have trouble trusting them so hopefully but uh. hey maybe it's long sleeve and short sleeve ai (laughs) wear is that it hot dog i'm so excited (laughs) i'm really I'm really happy and I can't wait. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that was not my best. Um, but yeah, how about weapons? What were your favorite weapons to use? Uh, I used the... My autocorrect messed up the spelling. I think it's called the Kesh. It's a shotgun and it's, I think... <gasps> oh my God, I think that's the one I used. I love did, it, did it so have a, fucking much. It's like army green. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Is does it shoot like a ball or maybe that was my uh I don't think mine does. The one I used was Ket, um, but it it shot giant fireballs. <laughs> that's amazing. I think that's what Taylor was using because it was like electric kind of. Mm, mm, sort of. I mine's just I a regular know shotgun. That what I used was Ket. But... I yeah, mine was a shotgun too. I had been using the Sidewinder pistol mm-hmm. and I still love that pistol. It's the best. Um uh, and it's the only pistol I really enjoyed using. Um, the snipers, un- unfortunately, for whatever reason, there's a bug that makes a lot of high level weapons do like no damage, like a Ugh. tiny, tiny doodle of damage, which is upsetting. Um, so until that gets fixed, I-, I can't use my snipes, which are my favorite thing in the whole world. So it sucked. I was bummed. But um, that yeah, that cat shotgun changed my life. I can one shot people. Mm-hmm. They just go. Yeah, you're gone. That's what I like. Done. Literally, I would like it's rush amazing. in and do that, and it was just it felt really good. Maybe that might be the one I use. I don't know. Though. But I crafted it and I named it Jolene. You're good. I don't name mine. I did it first and then I stopped because because it doesn't say what it is. Does that sound dumb? But like. When you scan over it, you can call it something, but it it removes the name of the actual weapon itself. And I'm like, "Eh." yeah, that irritated me because I was like, I don't remember what this was. (laughs) Yeah, who knows? I mean, a lot of people have talked about the uh, the interface for the research being weird. Um, And I can agree that it could definitely be more friendly to someone who doesn't want to click so much. Um, Yeah. But what did you think of research in general, uh, as far as like options and bleh, and uh, was it hard to do? Did you want to do it? Was it worth it? Considering sometimes you could find those items out in the world already. It wasn't. Hor- I liked being able to customize like how many slots you could have and stuff like that, and um, being able to name it and stuff. It was it was easier for me than the Dragon Age Inquisition crafting, and I felt like you actually got things that were higher level because a lot of the problem i had with the dragon age stuff is most of the stuff i would pick up like plans for weren't as high level or i couldn't make them as high level as the stuff that i just found so i tended to not even mess with crafting in inquisition whereas this like i felt like i was making things that were better than what i was finding you know in inquisition i only crafted for pretty armor yeah that's that's it and you just wouldn't and sometimes i didn't even care if it was you know good for me i just used it because it was pretty yep yep i did use some assault rifles but i i can't really remember i just picked a random one it was probably an old milky way special i don't think there was enough in the remnant section though Mm -mm. because there was only one remnant armor and it was atrocious because it was very bulky and you looked kind of nutty wearing it yeah it was not cute um I kind of wish there had been more um, for those, but maybe in the future, maybe, I don't know, cosmetic stuff, they said. They said, uh, okay, what about abilities? Um, What were things you particularly enjoyed? Made you very happy to do, Um, and maybe some combos that you like together? Um, I mostly went biotic and tech, so my favorite thing to do was, um, which is just tech, but... I liked doing incinerate and then overload because it makes fireworks. Literally, they would just explode and it looked like fireworks. It was very satisfying. I don't think... Well, I probably did. That had a short range, though, so I didn't get as much utility out Mm of it. I use a shotgun, and so I was constantly in close quarters, so it made sense for me, but... I did love overload. I thought it was great. Sometimes there'd be situations where I just changed my loadout. And it was cool. And I finally put charge back in. And then I'd come across a fiend. 
uh, the Baker eyes and what they're called. I don't mm-hmm. know. And um, and I'd be like, oh shit. And then I have to change back. Um, I really liked having like just concussive shot overload. And oh god, what is the lance? Because I, because that was good for range for those situations. There were times that playing it just like without new game plus because I think I'm level ninety seven. Um, but before that, oh my god, some of those fights were a pain in the ass. Especially that one thing where you get like a, a fiend and whatever a hydra. Man, man, not Hydra. Whatever the remnant thing that looks like a Hydra oh, is. Oh, God. Uh, in the final battle. That was a pain in my ass, but it's so much easier when you, like, have a higher level. So, don't worry, people. It it gets easier. It's bullshit. Till then. Um, but, I, yeah, that's not... What I really enjoyed, my favorite ability was probably Cryo Beam. I just love freezing people. Mm. I just... And Lance is really great. I want to experiment, though, with melee. It's just... Oh dear God! Sometimes you—it's hard. Sometimes I miss my target. I get out my Asari sword. Oh yeah, I use the Asari sword too. It's—it's <laughs> it's great. It is. But um, sometimes you—it's hard to get in the right direction, at least for me, yeah. because I'm not used to it. Probably, and I love charge. Of course, charge is just—it's great. I just want to—I want to charge into everybody, and I started experimenting with um. Oh God, damn that! You know the ball. <laughs> did you float whatever what is that called again oh um the thing that liara can do yep is it stasis yeah although that never that name never made sense to me but i think that's right i love it and what i love about it is when you're within um range of it you all sound like echoey as shit it's great um but like I guess for this run, yeah, Charge was definitely my favorite. And uh, Cryo. It's just fun. I do like burning people, but this time I wanted to freeze them. It felt appropriate. I love it when they shatter apart. Um, And in line with that, my favorite duo to have with me um, was Korra and Drac. I just, I fucked it up. It's, it, got, it got real. Because Korra was always coming in to combo with me. Like always. It was great. She would just charge in when I was on cooldown and she would take my frozen targets out and it was beautiful. And Drac, he helps because he deals with fiends a lot in close quarters because they obviously murder me, but he's fine for whatever reason. <laughs> for some unknown reason, he's okay. But yeah, I loved Cora and Drac together. I thought they were uber sweet together. Um, He's nice to where it starts out a little weird, but there's a, a convo where somebody basically says oh you know uh drax thinks you hate him and and uh she's like oh i don't i i think we're friends or whatever and they're like but you better never tell them that it's just it's weird but it's cute and i'm probably phrasing that super wrong um and i loved veteran pb because they have a really cute little friendship and they're like you know they're like yeah and um and cora and doll it's like a weird flirtation going on there, but um, not so much for combat, but that's nice. Uh, oh, and um, PB and Drac, obviously. That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Liam and Drac is kind of depressing, though, at times. Uh, Cora and Vetra is great. I love them. So probably Cora, Vetra, and Cora, Drac. You see a trend here? I like Cora. <laughs> <laughs> because she gets along with like everybody for the most part. Um, I feel like at least that I've experienced. So that's why I enjoy taking her lawn. Plus, I don't know. So yeah, Becca, tell us your favorite uh people to pair together. Um, I really liked Vetra and Drac. I liked their banter and stuff. Uh, Vetra and PB were really cute. Um, I tended to take Jal and Vetra with me just because they're my favorites, but I don't think that they particularly like come like meshed combatically or whatever very well but they were really cute like when they talked to each other that was really sweet because it starts off kind of rough and then like he's basically like psychoanalyzing her the entire time so but it turns into this sweet friendship and i liked that pb and vetra sort of disagreed on things at first kind of like vetra and liam but they were able to you know work through it rather than liam oh 
I can't wait to see them work through it because I felt bad. I haven't heard that stuff yet, but I felt bad. And, you know, what I also like about Jal and Cora is that because um, she talks about her family Mm -hmm. and herself more with him. And because we don't know a ton about her, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, and uh, I like them, but yeah, they're sweeties, and and I'm glad that those things didn't uh, turn out poorly. I wish that Lexi and PB had come to better situation. Me though. too. I wish they had. You know, that would have been nice, but but oh well. I have a question. Who do you think they're gonna like carry over into the next game? Because I feel like they never keep all of them. They normally like pick and choose. Who do you think it's yeah, going to be? I, well, here's the thing. I've already kind of thought about the fact that as sad and upsetting as it is and makes no sense, Vetra, no matter what, like talks about how she wants to get a place with Sid, right? Mm-hmm. And even though you can be like, sure, she's still like, she's actually mad if you say that that isn't her within her like personality to like retire essentially but she's like 22 so that's confusing she was behaving like she was uh quite older i don't think she's actually 20 20, because um there's the writer said she was 20 i don't understand i know i I know they they said she was 20 but um i remember danielle uh rain the lady who voices her said that she's in her late 20s so which makes more sense since (sighs) she was supposedly the writer said early 20s nobody makes sense anymore I don't think they know what they – I think they thought that they were talking about someone else, honestly, because, like, it makes no sense if she was the same age as um, – if she was the same age as Sid when Sid was, like, two or three. I just don't trust them. I don't think that they know what the fuck they're talking How about. How old is Sid? Is she legal? What's going on I don't here? think so. I think she's, like, 16 or 17. <gasps> what? Yeah. I'm upset. I don't like that at all. Oh, man. We didn't really talk about how, like, you find the um, pod that they say a um, Turian child was Mm -hmm. in, and he's dead. Or, like, the fact that there's an Asari preschool. Like, there's always talk about children, and we never see them. It drives me nuts. And, yes, what what is wrong with you, Bioware? And also, you killed the child. You killed them. There's daycare. I I, I hate that kind of stuff. It bothers me. But I, if she's that young, then no, she should not be involved. That changes everything. She's, I thought she was, this is so confusing. This is, why is she woken up? She's 16 years old. I'm so confused. I don't know. I mean, maybe she's a little older than that, but I seriously doubt it. Because otherwise, Vetra's like, because let's see, 16 minus. I think they said something about 15 there's a 15 number that I wrote down in relation to Vetra. Because mm, in some of her, like, banter or, like, when you talk to her, she talks about her dad and whatever. So weird. My guess is she was about 15 when he left and Sid was yeah. probably. That's probably the number I found. And if it's been about 15. She said she was a toddler. Like, that she was. Yeah. She... If she, she was a toddler, then. Yeah. I think she said that Sid was two or three when he left. And that Vetra was about the same age as Sid is now. She's not. What? So there's no way she's in her early 20s. Like, there's no fucking way. There's no way that a seven-year-old could take care of a three-year-old. Like, they would have just died. They would have both died. Yeah. That's what was, it's it's strange. I, I hate stuff like that. Give me a goddamn birthday. Just well, do it. Do it. It's like Please. of all the things like that y'all are keeping track of, I'm like, I feel like age and like, I don't know, just basic they stuff just, like I, that. You know what that makes that me feel like? To take care or like keep track of what? It shouldn't. But it makes me think of like that they're trying to make everybody super young so they can like time jump or like keep the everybody young you know what i mean they don't want to because i guess shepherd was like in her mid-30s no right? she was just 30 when the the game starts oh okay well she's in her 30s i feel like they're trying to make everybody young um for tone and also for just like future games yeah so they don't have to be looking into twilight years rider i don't know it's, it's confusing but i kind of hate it to be honest with you, as someone who is aging, I kind of don't like it. 
<laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm talking about like the making people younger, not aging. I'm okay with aging. Yeah. I get frustrated because um, I was thinking about it and I was like, I'm 28 and a lot of the characters are sort of like uh, Joel's 27. And mm-hmm. I was like, I would at least Joel's older than me. I feel yeah, okay, but just a little. The thing is, like, I as a twenty-eight-year-old would never date a twenty-two-year-old ever. That's very true. Like, not because. What if they were an alien? No, not even then. Because I just really? feel like there's. I mean, unless I don't know. I would date. I would I date know. a twenty-something year. Twenty-something, maybe not twenty, but the something I would date an alien. But you're a few years younger yeah. than me, so. Okay, but I, I get it. I was pretending that I was in the future at my, all right, whatever. All right. I just. I, it doesn't apply to me because that would be like, uh, you know, at 24, I probably still wouldn't date someone who was under 20 or even yeah. 20. I'm not, I'm not interested. Mm-mm. Not interested in that, you, you young baby. I just. Baby. It's very, it was hard for me to believe like that. I don't know. 22 you you're a baby. Like sorry for people who are younger than that or that age. Like you're you're a baby to me. You like I barely felt like an adult at 25. Ooh, Gaga, how did you find this <laughs> like, device? Where did you find you're this so device? So baby to me. So, I don't know. I it seems really weird that Vetra and Jaw would be like, "Yeah, let's date this 22-year-old human. That sounds fun." Yeah. And also that she would he or she would be ready for this. Dad. Yeah. Dad. Dad. What the hell? Why? That they would take it that well? Yeah. It doesn't really make sense. Okay. All right. So what did you think of the um, defeat of Mr. Archon? Once you, you know, he kidnaps your bro or your sis, whatever. I hate the word sis. He kidnaps him and um, and the Hyperion, which well, lots of people, lots of them. and um, yeah, what did you think of that whole end quest? How did it vibe with you? Dun, dun. I felt like I was supposed to be more like worried, but I don't know. I I know that there's an, a possibility that Dunn can die, but I didn't have that happen. Was there anyone else who can die? Yep. Hold on. I have my variable list. Okay. Dunn can die, and the reason she can die is if you don't have all the Pathfinders. So you got to do the Turian arc. Obviously, you do the Solarian by default. And you got to do Korra. So otherwise, she always lives. I don't know what the difference huh. is because she's not like wearing a seatbelt or anything in either version, <laughs> um, which could have resolved a lot of her injuries that I assume hmm. she gets either way. Um, Sloan can obviously die. Yeah. Um, you can, if you do the Angara uh, AI quest, that Angara can die. That's like a yeah. lesser thing. Um, uh, destroying the facility or saving the Angara on bowl. Um, the Salarians are Krogan. And then, uh, we haven't talked about this yet, but who can be ambassador, which is something Becca and I have been trying so hard to understand because there's, the guide says one thing, the game says another. Yeah, at the end, the Moshai, um, Addison, and uh, Ephra are all standing near each other. So it seems to me that there is like a way to unlock Mm -hmm. them as ambassador options. Um, but the guide says that he's an option and it doesn't say that, uh, more does an option. So it's very weird. Well, that, and I know that some people online have gotten cash, so I want to <gasps> understand. What? Yeah. You found evidence? I thought that was just a, a myth I perpetuated. I mean, maybe it is, but I thought that I, someone I perpetuated had... it. I'm sorry. I might've told you that inaccurately. Well, it wasn't something Listen, you said. It was, it was like a picture of people being like yeah i got cash because i did this and i was like i don't know because i did that and i didn't get cash i did everything and i didn't get ephra i did everything i was i was not, i gave him the ai i i tried to i completed all the angara quests that i could and he wouldn't be my my mister it was sad mm. yep uh and then you can choose who you know to keep uh <sighs> the hell's her name Ooh, the lady that um cora loves sarissa oh, yeah. you can choose to keep her in charge or the other lady um obviously uh the sol- or you can also uh evictus or avi can um 
can uh, just, you know, not take over Pathfinder and he can become a drunk. And, you know, that's that's a variable. That can um, happen? Yep. Oh. It can happen. That's so it's great. sad. I wonder who becomes Pathfinder then. I don't want to know. Because that either. seems really tragic. Um, obviously, who the Pathfinder for the Salarians can change. Gil can have a baby or not have a baby. Though I told him a million times... Don't have a baby, and he still had a baby. So I'm wondering if you can only change it if you're with him, like romantically. Mm. So that's stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. Uh, but those are the only variables I know of. Uh, there probably are more. I don't know. Who knows? But I will figure out how to get um, an ambassador that is off that list. Who do I have to kill? Who do I have to murder? Send me a list, Bioware. Please. I just want cash. Yep, me too. That's all I want. Or Ephra. That would be nice. Ephra, I think, would be good. I don't really like the Moshai that much. Me either. Uh, so the ending, you weren't terribly impressed then with how things came to a head. The epic battle. I mean. He rose. He did his, like, um, what is that thing called with the the, like sheets not sheets but they're cloth hanging from ceiling and people twirl around them that's what he was doing yeah yeah it was beautiful it was beautiful i'll give it that True. it was sparkly Very. it was so sparkly mm -hmm. but it was not i just it's honestly my issue is just i'm not that interested in the cat or the archon and i would have preferred it being more about meridian and all that stuff and i mean it was but it, i just it, it was a good game. It was a good ending. It's just, again, like I said, feels like the beginning of something. And it just didn't, it, more questions than answers. And I just can't deal. How did you feel when you saw Primus at the end? I knew it was coming, but I still got real mad. because I was like, no, we should be done. This should be done. This should be over. That should have been it. It's never over. I hate it. How did you feel? When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's right. I, I felt the exact same way. Um, the story, if, it, if the story had felt different from the Reaper, so, so very different, then maybe I would have been more lenient because um, I felt that way about Dragon Age Inquisition. But even like... Um, even with uh, Corypheus, it was deeper because, like, you found out what he was about. Like, he believed in the old gods and he went to the city. And I'm not going to get into that because I could. But um, there was more of a story to that that you knew of anyway. And then after, it wasn't really even about him. It was about Solus. Uh, spoiler. So many spoilers. So at the end, he, Primus is our Solus. And I don't give a fuck. <laughs> It means nothing. Mm -mm. It's just the same. It's like a Corypheus popping out another Corypheus at the end. Um, so there's no redemption in that for me. Yeah, because the Remnant is definitely supposed to be like the Remnant and the Jordan and all that stuff are supposed to be the like big thing, maybe, I guess, that we're going to deal with in the next game. And they're game. made like really small. Yeah. They're not, they're, they're not treated mm -mm. like that at all. It doesn't come across. And then we get a second Corypheus, like you said, with primus and it's just like what the fuck y'all just let it go like we don't need an overarching baddie for three games like please no please i can't they really screwed themselves though in terms of um just how they've told it like at this point they kind of have to deal with it which is upsetting i wish they hadn't included that but at the same time everything they set up makes it like well we have to deal with that there's like a ton of other Argons out there. What the fuck? I don't want to deal with this. It it doesn't make me excited about a game, and and that that's sad. But um, oh my god, what? I just realized they didn't have any hideous clothing in the game. Like the Asari and the human ladies didn't wear like their long, hideous, badly color swatched dresses. I don't remember any, anyways. Oh, you know, well. I think, I think you might be right. Like, I'm not positive what everybody was wearing in the clubs, the clubs. I don't know. But I, you might, you know what? Oh, in the, uh, I'm thinking of the concept art. The concept art had some. Yeah. But I, I, you might be right. 
That would be great. Uh, but sorry to detract. I just was thinking about it, and okay. I was like, "Oh my god, that would be wonderful." Oh my if, god, if you're correct, and <laughs> there isn't. But hey, you don't have a lot of time to go around in, in dresses, apparently. I don't know. In fact, well, I'm sure people were in dresses. Who knows? You just get dust things. in your stuff. In your stuff, you get all dusty. <laughs> The dust. <laughs> Get all that sand up in those places. Not good. Bad time. I like it. Um, my mind went. Uh, so the first time I picked the Moshai as my ambassador, who did you pick? Same. I picked Moshai because I was like, this seems safe, and I mean, Bradley would have been um perfectly fine, but I felt like maybe it would be putting human stuff forward, and so yeah. I wasn't sure if that was the right way uh, to go. I. Th- I don't remember who I chose that time. Oh, my God. But when you choose Morda Tan goes, this will be interesting. Fuck you, Tan. He is so upset. Um, But, uh, yeah, the first time I actually chose Reika, and here's the deal. I didn't realize that she was the Tan choice for some reason. I was just like, I like Reika. Yeah. She's cool. It was just the choice. And, like, if I wasn't thinking about that, I might still choose her. I don't know. Uh, but like, as far as if I got all the options I'm supposed to unlock, I want it to be Ephra because I like him more. No offense, Moshai. No offense. Um, Full but offense, you, Moshai. what do you think if you had all those options, but I don't know that Kesh is an option. So you can choose her, but like who are the ones that we think are actual options? Mm, probably Ephra. It's like, I'd like to choose Reka, but not if it's going to make Kesh mad. That's not worth it. Um, oh, is she mad? I don't know. I thought so. I thought she got mad and she was like, I can see that you don't care about the, the, uh, yeah. Oh. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I'm sorry. I don't, you know, the reason I changed it is because people were mad at me. In fact, the Moshai was mad at me and that's why I changed it. Hmm. So. Just can't please everybody. No. And that's what you can say. You can be like, well, what, no matter what I did, I was going to upset someone. Yep. So thanks. <laughs> thanks for proving thanks. me right. Um, during the epilogue, after you like talk to your brother or your sister, whatever, um, you meet those three people. And I forget what her name is, but there's that lady who uh, apparently grew up on a Korean ship. Oh, yeah. Her godparents are Koreans. Yeah. I think it's weird they introduced them there, though. It was very strange. I did, too. I was like, is, are y'all going to be like, in the DLC? Are you, you going to be you guys? our new are you my friend? squad mates next time? I don't know who you are. You're kind of mean, you. Some of you are kind of mean. Oh, that one oh, guy? I was like, you need to just get out of here. I'm I'm going to have to just kick you out. Please oh, leave. God. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Mm-mm. I'm not a big fan of that one. But uh, the coin thing was interesting. And um, and then moving on to the bigger, the bigger thing. You mean the best part? The thing that made the game worth all my frustration and depression. <laughs> um, that made it worth everything and was the only moment that I was really like absolutely intoxicated with with my space <laughs> is the uh the lady who's like, Hey, we found a signal from the Korean Ark. Dun 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 <sighs> And then after I screamed for a couple hours, mm-hmm. it was cool. Um, so they were like, oh, yeah, we got a signal from like this from the Korean Ark. But they're telling us to stay away. Stay away from Skull Island. So we got to stay away. Um, but apparently the whole reason behind this, which I don't know if we've talked about before, is that they're like, oh, well, they had special accommodations, some of these aliens. Um, but we know it's a Korean ship called... Oh, God. Kila Sia? Yeah, yeah. And I have no idea how to translate that because sometimes, I don't know. Any idea what that means? <laughs> nope. Nope. It means something. Uh, and they had Volus and Drell and Hanar. Oh, God. Did they mention anyone else? Any other species? I don't uh, remember. I don't think so. I don't think Vorcha. Mm-mm. God, please no. no. Please no. I know people love Vorcha Wait, sometimes. Wait, were Volus on I... there? Was it Volus? Yeah, they were. They were. Thank God. I want my Volus. Yeah. Please don't take away my Volus. I can't do it. I can't lose I it. I was so bummed that we didn't have Volus in the multiplayer. They are the best. Like, I just don't understand. It does. My problem 
if I had to analyze what it is about the game that made me feel like, well, this isn't my world as much anymore, is that I was missing some of my aliens, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, the aliens that made it good. Like, I want my aliens back. Corians, number one, devastated me. It will never feel like Mass Effect without them, so... That was a huge problem I had. And I, don't, I still don't understand the choice. Was this something they always chose, I mean, to do? Or was this a, a decision made to, I don't know. So they don't, they're out there and they're like, no, don't come here. And we're like, we're going to come. Duh. <laughs> so that's probably DLC, folks. Mm-hmm. What did you think of, of that subtle DLC hint? Um, I'm very, very excited about it. Honestly, like... That if if this game did anything, it made me super excited for the next game because I was like, they're going to get to the things that I care about, which is more of the aliens that I'm familiar with. And I do think that they did succeed in a way that the trilogy didn't, where there's a lot of like world building and flavor, like where they'll talk about, you know, the fact that Kahlo has a Turian soap opera that he likes and they talk about, you know, videos and cultural things that I thought were interesting that they didn't really touch on in the trilogy enough. And so I'm hoping that they'll keep doing those things and maybe work on some of the stuff that didn't quite click in this game. But the Quarian stuff, I am so excited about. I'm so ready for that DLC. And I'm pretty sure they're going to do something like at the six month mark and then, or maybe even the three month mark. I guess it depends on how much of the patch they have to do like how big of one yeah they probably have more patching to do than mm-hmm. than yeah they planned on yeah. maybe they'd plan on it because somebody was saying that if they got a patch out this quick for certain things like they did and they'd already had a bunch in the works and they already that's me because oh you did mm-hmm. you did yep I'm sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> Maybe someone else said it too, because I swear I would remember if you said it. I don't know. Well, I was talking to Ryan, and he was like, it takes for Xbox to approve mm, a... Probably. Um, yeah, you were the one. Yeah. Someone told me. Someone I <laughs> someone I haven't talked to in a long time. That happens to me a lot, where I'll tell someone something, someone and they're like, me. I'm going to tell you this funny story. And I'm like, you're talking about... that's I That was me, but that's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. It's funny. Yeah. It's really funny. Mm-hmm. But I also am very excited, and I just, I want them all. And, oh, my God, what if they're not in suits? Oh, I'll die. I vomit. Oh, my God. Can you imagine having to spend all that time in stasis in a suit? That's sad. That's like a double. That would feel not good. Huh. Real not good. Well, anyway, so we're going to do a whole thing about DLC in the future of, like, ideas for that. Probably something short, but, you know. Hopefully we get news on that because it seems like it's confirmed at this point that there has to be. Um, we didn't talk about movie night, oh, which yeah. is is something that made me go, I love you, game. Yeah, yeah. Movie night was really cute. I used it as an epilogue like I did it um, after I finished Except the Except Jal was invisible. For me, too. Yeah. I don't know what that's yeah, about. Yeah, I was invisible in Joel's arms. That was that felt bad. Mm. True love. <laughs> True love ways. Let's cuddle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's really sad. I love that you can play it two ways. Mm-hmm. And I love we're all on the couch. And uh, your romance option will say a little snippet before. And then you cuddle them. And I like the comedy one because... Uh, Callow plays the lawn either way, like if you take it serious or not. And um, one, he says something about like his lungs or something, mm-hmm. and she or a, I don't know some organ, and, and they're like, "Do you even have this?" Ryder says, and he's like, "Oh no, <laughs> it's worse than I it's thought." It's pretty good. Yeah, it's the best. Um, but I, I prefer the dramatic one because I wasn't expecting it. So it's a great quest, and th- somebody was having fun. So he's having a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I appreciated it. It was very fun. Uh, I didn't like having to get all the crap. Like, <laughs> that wasn't so fun. I don't guess you don't have to, but. Mm. Yeah, I liked that. But that's because I liked, like, the fact that we get to know what Turian popcorn is like oh, yeah, and true. stuff like that. Just yeah. flavor stuff. I don't mind that. Makes just... it worth it. Can I just have someone pick it up for me? No. <laughs> okay. This is a quest. All right. All right. Um, the final thing is kind of we already touched on it, which is 
Um, the whole babies issue. <sighs> I don't even, I don't want to talk about it, but I feel like we should because it's really called Jill. Is what this should be called, Jill. Jill, Jill. my BFF Jill is horrible, <laughs> and somebody should take care of that. She should be no. Why? I feel I love you know. We're kind of not talking about them right now, but or as much. But I really liked Gil on a lot of levels. I felt that was out of character for him. That didn't feel like Gil. Like I feel like he was being manipulated. Just to be real, um, because she was like the only person that he really connected to and well that and the fact that he is constantly like making excuses for her behavior feels very like someone who's in an abusive relationship where you if you have to constantly be like well no that's just how we are no that's just blah 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 it's i don't know i don't i don't like it i feel like the writers had to know that that was super fucking skeevy like i no 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 I said it before, I'll say it again, but like if that's if they made you sign something to be like you have to reproduce when you come here, I'd be like, no. Like, no, I have skills. Like I, I don't I don't want to come here to have a baby. And also we haven't even defeated the cat at this point and you're gonna have a baby. Are you okay? Well then some of that stuff. You know someone's gonna weird. have like five, so it's like, do I really need to have one? Like yeah. they're gonna someone out there have a baby for me yeah. and I'm done. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. You're taking you're taking the heat. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for taking one for the team. I really appreciate yep. it. You literally had a baby. You you did good. You did good, Barbara. Um, but yeah, I just I hated that. That was something that we talked about really probably probably in one of our early episodes. We must have talked about how we were like we don't want that to be a thing. Like realistically, yeah, people are going to reproduce, but there's 200,000 people, and that isn't the priority right now. Mm -mm. Like, for all we know, it could take these people's lifetimes, and nobody goes out of stasis until it's ready to be, like, a settled place. So, just, it's weird, and I feel bad for Gil, and I feel bad for anybody romancing Gil. That's, like, a person, I don't know how he treats you in a romance, though, so I guess I shouldn't comment, but if Suvi, even though I haven't romanced her, for various reasons that I probably said at some point or other. Um, I just, I feel bad if Suvi had been like, yeah, I'm going to have a baby now because my best friend told me to. And I, I think I like to be a father someday, so I'm going to do it. I'd be like, what? Are you, like, do you understand you're on my ship? Like, you're serving. You're going to have a baby right now? I don't, it was weird. It was really weird. It was super weird. It worries me about the future games, though, because I'm like, are we going to have to have a baby? Are we going to yeah, get oh a my choice God. in that? Because, I mean, oh I God, would want one, but thing. I know you wouldn't. Listen, no. And PB, like, if you're in a romance with PB, it just doesn't have anything to do with her. But when you talk to Jal, um, you can say something about wanting to show your kid vids. And, like, I didn't choose that option. I just said something about, oh, yeah, I something about vids that was the question um he was looking at vids of the milky way um and the whatever i picked was like i'm gonna show my kids someday i'm like what kids where are these children what are you talking about writer 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 shut up it was just so that's what i mean about like taking you out of it like the way i'm playing it is like some that round anyway was similar to me and i don't want babies and it just felt very like pushed on me and like I don't like that at all. It was very heteronormative, and I'm ashamed. <laughs> so bad. I I mean, because I know that in um the trilogy at the end, when Garrus is like, you know, maybe find out what a a little, you know a Turian human baby would be like, and Shepard can be mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, maybe let's adopt, or you can be like us parents. I don't really think so, and I feel like yeah, that's I that's that fair. That's like her being like, and the thing is the. The little like tag thing says kids question mark, which implies I don't want kids. Okay. If it's an alien baby, then I'm kind of on board. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, w I actually probably chose the adopt because like if we're talking alien babies, I'm cool with that. I'm not having a human baby. <laughs> yeah. If I can adopt an alien baby, that's different. I'm okay with adopting maybe someday when I'm like older. I guess my, my point is like the fact that she has you know, some agency. Which you don't get, unfortunately. Oh. Anyway, mm -hmm. that just skewed me out. And that on top of like, um, 
Oh, I feel like there's another one. But that on top of the fact that there's uh, multiple LGBT whose like spouses have died. Yeah. And you know what calls out to me is, um, oh God, it, the Laura Bailey voice is this one. I mean, three, the one who's at the embassy um, counter. Is her wife dead? I can't remember. I hope not. Um, but I definitely remember that woman who's asking about her wife or something uh, in the embassy in three. Anyway, I, but the point is, I don't like it when when we hear references of dead LGBT. Just, it's it's dumb. If I, do you include it just to be like, no, they're dead. They're dead. And it's not, and the thing is, especially with the fact that Aldi and Gara are straight, it's just kind of weird. Um, I don't see any of them around that are... I just, I wish there's not enough inclusion of LGBT to just willy nilly be like throwing off. Oh, well, they're dead now. Then her widow wife. Well, it feels like tragedy porn. It's like, oh, it is. We, we should, you know, feel sorry for these people. And they're, see, they're real people. And it's like, duh. Of course they're real people. Of course they have like relationships and they love people. And they, it just, it pisses me off. I'm pretzeling in my rage. <laughs> It upsets me that he didn't really get much of a reaction either. Mm-mm. And like, he didn't get to have a like, if I found out that my, my lover was dead. I mean, maybe he'd kind of come to terms on it. Maybe, I don't know, but I feel like maybe that's an animation thing. They didn't want to animate it. I don't know. I'm trying to find, but I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty fucked up from that. Yeah, same. But well, what can you do? I'm sure I'll have more to say on that when we get to talking about characters, but now I have a list of all the things I disliked because I want to end it on the positives. So I feel like if I start with the dislikes, then um, some of these I've already covered. So there probably won't be much. And I've got a lot of loves. And I've already talked about those. So sand planets, duh. Mm-hmm. Um, I was disappointed in Suvi. And I'll get into that in the uh, character episode. But I... I was um, Vetra not having a sex scene, obviously. Yep. Not good. Not good. Um, PB and her girlfriend situation was, I could have done without that. I don't know. I just didn't like it. Maybe it's because I romanced her and it was like, it's, it can get weird with that. Um, Oh, and sometimes for whatever reason, uh, a dialogue option will be grayed out, but there's more to click on. Um, Like I remember with Kalinda. I clicked on it the first time, and then when I accidentally clicked it again, there was new dialogue options that didn't pop up. That's more of, like, an annoyance. A lack of new aliens, like, multiples. That's, I wanted that bad. Well, especially since they said there would be, and then there weren't. Nope. That, that's what really sucks. And I didn't like um, that Callum and Gil, when they make up, they don't become lovers. That was upsetting. Uh, and Jan being dead. So we've covered most of those. So I've got like a jillion likes. I'm going to lay it on you. I'm going to end, well, at least my part of the discussion with all these. So I already talked about it, but the Salarian doctor on Elodin for the fertility. She's awesome. Um, Vetra, during that quest where you uh, find Dr. Kennedy and she has her baby, Vetra yells, yes, when the baby's safe. I love Did it. you take Jaw? No, what is oh, he Oh, it's really cute. He's like, ah, ha, ha. He starts laughing. He's like, hooray. Oh, you know it's really what? really cute. I don't know. I might have. Sometimes it'll like not sh- give you one of the dialogue if the other mm. one is there. Um. Oh, uh, that's more of a note. But apparently Cora's parents uh, disappeared somewhere in the attic in Traverse, which I thought was interesting. And that she looked for them. That's just more of a note. Oh, I already noted Cora and Vetra because I love them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Vetra and the lotion thing with Joel, yeah. how she traded him for lotion. Yeah. That is that is pure. Um, Liam, <laughs> Liam, at one point, he's talking about how he's like mapping the scourge or something. And he's talking about how the cat are bad, but whoever deployed the scourge, there's some motherfuckers. So I just love that line. It's great. Um, Vetra is super into Suvi and her voice. She's like, she makes comments that are like, if if you could romance a voice, that would be that would be it. So she's into Suvi. Mm-hmm. Um Cora and Jaw being like brother and sister. I love shotguns. <laughs> it's just inside my mind. Um uh, PB had a sister that was 500 years older. I found that great. 
Um, so she had like two moms. I liked that one. Um, PB and Vetra together. Ooh. Addison admitting she was wrong and didn't do enough about Spender. Beautiful. Uh, Cash is a nerd. <laughs> and multiple people tell you to fuck off. I think I was told about three times. It was it was glorious. And I, I loved it very much. Um, in the moment, I was like, oh, that's unnecessary. But then I was like, this is good. Oh, Gil sends you poetry. So much poetry. I just, I, I, that's why I loved him. He would be like, he's like, I've been up 60 hours working on your ship and here's my poem. <laughs> I love him. I love Gil. Um, there's also a ship named Local Boy, <laughs> which I found amusing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I like the thing about the Geth. I hope that comes into play. How the Geth are the people that figured out that, uh, that scanned Andromeda basically, which is freaking nuts. Um, uh, the callow uh, giving credits away. Ooh, the jellyfish colony, which I already talked about. Um, um, Drac hanging out in the kitchen. That is pure. I love it. I was like, that's what made me know that we were going to be close. Because he wanted to bunk in the kitchen. And that's where I'd want to be, too. And he cooks. I just love it. Um, Mornax Vincar means bad mistake. Now, I found that on a planet. Uh, I think it was the Turians who failed it, but it was pretty funny. There's some planets out there with cute names. Um, and I did actually like Knight and her son, that deal. Um, I kind of hope we see him again, but anyway. I love that Jal says that Shalom is his favorite greeting he's learned so far. <laughs> um, I love that Liam loves the pie jack. I love that Reyes, no matter what, always says uh, something like... Uh, you're okay, Ryder, but uh, sometimes you're a dick or something like that. I love that. I love when he calls me a dick. I don't know why. It just feels good. Like, I don't know what I did, but I appreciate it. Um, I love that Zoria, the Angara, um, that helps you basically find the last monolith um, through that Rokar guy. So his, like, past life was Zoria. I love that she was a lady and she seemed badass and I'm sorry she's dead. Yeah, um, and I also love Drac and PB together. Um, they're kind of, they're just super funny, and they make superhero references. Um, the gorgeous star maps, and the fact that Liam wants to headbutt, headbutt Drac. That is beautiful. And that's it. Those are all really good. I, uh, yeah, some I probably already talked about, but you know what? It's okay to restate them, because I feel like ending it on... A lot of things you really loved because things like that made the game worth mm-hmm. playing mm-hmm. for me. I'm weeping, no. but so give me some dislikes or just likes. I mean, at this point, we probably talked about most of what we disliked. Yeah. That's what happened on my list. Yeah. So give me some loves. Okay. Um, I really liked the Vetra trading jaw for the lotion thing when she was like, I'm softer than any Turian should be. And I was like, that's hilarious. Uh, I really liked the mouse that you can catch, and I really liked uh, Rorik, that Krogan, where he was just like, sometimes I just want to be alone. I don't know. Really loved him. He was really sweet. Uh, I liked seeing Turians that were, like, green and stuff. That was cool. Yeah. Like, uh, the oh, isn't it the lady who's, like... um. A Victus, not a Victus, uh, your boy. Avidus? What's his name? No, 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 the other. Oh. The one you want to get down oh. with. Um. Yeah, you, you forgot. I to. did, yes. Candros. Candros, yeah. Yeah, I like Candros. Yeah, his assistant, I think. Doesn't she have those green markings? I'm just on the same page here. I think I so. don't particularly like that they're orange and green, but I respect mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, I really liked that Callow watches Turian um, soap opera and the fact that there are Turian soap operas. That's really great. And it's apparently been going on for, I think he said 60 years or 60 cycles, 60 seasons, something like that. I don't know. Bananas. And then I really love the Blasto cereal. And I liked the in movie night when they were like, Turian flexing. Is there too much? And they're like, there really can be. They're really... When Cal is like, there really is too much. There can be too much. I liked Lexi asking if she can have, like, scientific information about you and Jal doing it. 
that was funny. I enjoyed the fact that she was like, it's for science. And you're like, that's not very convincing. And I really liked when uh, Liam called Jal a dick. And I also liked when he would like come up with really weird um, turns of phrases that Jal was like, I don't know what the fuck that meant. <laughs> that was really cute. Their whole like banter was really cute. Yeah, they're who I took with me on my doll romance run, like, most of the time. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed them together. They're great. Yep. And I appreciate that they, they love each other. They do. That would also be a good, instead of um Joel and PB, Joel and Liam would have been yep. good. Just yep. saying. I would have liked Joel and Liam. I would have liked Joel and Vetra. I would have liked Vetra and PB. Honestly, I just don't get Joel and PB very much, just because he... I just don't get it, but whatever. Anyways, I also liked when um, PB decided she was going to call Vetra V, and Vetra was like, mm, I'm not going to respond to that, and so she started calling her peanut butter. I liked that. That was good. I really liked Cora's whole thing with dragons, and the, the non-sex um, part of her romance was so cute. It was so cute. <laughs> so cute. She, like, yawns and stuff precious anyways and then hmm uh i liked when when you lock in a romance with jaw and he's like yes that was really cute just that whole scene is really great just because it feels like i don't know that first love thing where you like someone a lot and you're embarrassing and they're embarrassing and it's great except his pet that he that was creepy i did not like that, that part that was i upsetting. did not like that that but i was chewing my pretzels I was listening, but I loved that chorus scene too. You know how I feel about chorus. And anyone, I know we'll cover it later, but she's the love of my life that I've been deprived mm -hmm. of. And I would, I never play male characters. And I went through a Scott run just to love her. Worth it. So this is a dedication <laughs> I've never experienced in my Bioware life. Yeah. So I love her. And you're right. That is the cutest scene in the world. And. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. I love her. She's such a good person. And <laughs> I think they're setting it up that she could be by in the next one because they just. God, if they're not, I'm going to. I'm kind of. So angry. I'm closing my pretzel case and I'm angry. <laughs> ugh. Seal. Seal pretzels. Yeah, okay. But. Oh, and I liked that Drac. I liked the interaction where Drac was like, "I'm making what's it called with like potatoes and blah blah blah." And PB's like, "Oh, it smells so good." And he's like, "It's not done. Don't open the oven." And she's like, <laughs> "She's already eating it." And he's like, "Thieves get sandwiches." That was really cute. I loved that. Aww. That was great. <laughs> I really could have taken so, so many cute. more of those. Um, the the crew boards. Me too more of those and you know i was thinking we should end it on like who are our favorite like i know this will change in subsequent replays mm -hmm. and probably games if they stay around but like who is who's your favorite character in the whole game hmm. that's hard i know my answer which is why i asked it because it's because i was thinking about it when you said that drac he's my favorite I can't help it. I did. It's not what I thought it would be. It's it's not at all. And you told me that uh, your friend Taylor was able to flirt with him. Yeah, it was at the end. She was able to. So was Henna. Henna was able to flirt with him too. Um, so I I don't know. And basically, you're you're like so that that uh, bar fight on Kadara was that like a date? And he's like. Uh, Were they locked in to romance? Yeah. And he was like, if that was a oh, date, yeah. you'd have known it. There would have been, he said, there would have been, there wouldn't have been an audience and there would have been more property damage. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. I told you, I'm weirdly like, like on a level, I'm not into that, but on a level, I am. Well, you've always been very I like, don't I don't want to kiss a Krogan. I don't want to romance a Krogan. I know. So this is very surprising. Well, I like track. Like, I know they say no soft Krogan, and d let's not get started on the sexual front <laughs> there. Let's not do that. But um, but I, I think they have in a way. And Drac is like, you're so sweet. And his story with Cash. with how he was and, and Cash, it just oh, warmed my heart. And I just, I love him. I think he is the character that 
And maybe that's because he wasn't a romance. I could definitely see him becoming one, but if he fucking dies on I'm I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill everyone. I'm real afraid he's I'm gonna done. die in the next one. No. I hate you all. Why? That's Bioware's MO. Oh, you love this person? They're gonna die. Yeah. I mean I mean and and, and that's as I said, Cora, but Cora, PB. Th- those are better too i love them all that's the thing i like i love them all all very very much like i didn't but just like who resonated with you on a level that you 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 didn't didn't expect or just on a a deeper level like like how i felt about dorian and inquisition um you know just i would say probably betra Hmm, I can see that. She definitely has more, like, backstory. She definitely talks about herself and her, like, actual past. Like, PB, other than banter, as far as I found, she doesn't really want to talk about, um, like, you don't know that she, uh, had an Elcor for their father unless, uh, you hear the banter or Joel says mm-hmm. it. Because she never told yeah. me, even when I was romancing. That didn't come up. She doesn't talk about her sister, mm-hmm. her mom. And that was, that's, like, something that I'll talk about in the character thing. I didn't like that. I wish she did, because she's the cutest. I think that the reason I like Vetra so much is because a lot of her um, character like development is her, basically, the reason that she wanted to come to Andromeda is because she wanted to like find out who she was, like who, who Vetra really is, because she hadn't really had the opportunity to really like experience life beyond as she says like being an asshole or dealing with assholes and i just i like the idea that she wanted to be soft and she is like she has soft qualities about her and that this like fresh start is her chance to really like figure out who she is and i i relate to that like that feeling of everyone thinks they know who i am but nobody really knows who i am except for me and even i'm a little confused on it because i've listen to how I'm supposed to be or how people think I am or whatever for so long. I don't know. It just spoke to me. I can see what you mean. Yeah. And she's, I I like that about her a lot. And if Cora hadn't resonated with me so much, maybe she would have been. It's just, it hard. It is. It's hard. But I love her. I bet her that is. I just, she's very charming and I will forever mourn the loss of her sex scene but whatever. i'm hoping that they'll add the sex scenes in the patch but i really doubt it okay well we're gonna end it here we're gonna say that uh probably the next episode out will be our character episode so if you've been waiting to hear us talk about that because that is hard not to oh talk my about, god yeah way. it is hard we we're gonna we're gonna get there um yeah man geez a lot and um and we're gonna probably do episodes on DLC or a minisode or just you know stuff and we've kind of been talking about having like non-specific episodes where we just talk mm-hmm. you know if that might be a thing I don't know I don't know what people want I don't either what do the people want yeah tweet us Somebody tell us what me. you want because we don't know we don't know do you want to yeah, do plugs uh, well yeah oh okay you plug? okay i'll plug and then that way you can think of yours okay, okay. i started writing down ones because yeah oh god you're ahead of me i'm normally not so anyways uh <clears throat> becky clunan just started a new like comic series and it's called southern cross well i mean it started like last year but it's really good it's a sci-fi it's another sci-fi comic series and um, it's this woman solving, like, her sister's uh, disappearance. And it's it's really good. Like, I've only read the first volume. And I think the second volume just came out. Or maybe it's going to come out soon. But it's really good. You should check it out if you like sci-fi and sort of murder mysteries. It's really good. And my unplug is... um. You go, you do your plug. I'm going to think of an unplug. I don't, I don't know. Why is it so much easier to think of things I do? <laughs> Good. Um, oh, I like Strangers. It's a podcast. Um, 
and it's, it's basically mostly uninterrupted people telling their various stories. Um, and it's just, it's interesting. The lady who um, hosts it, it's, I think it's quite an older program. I just really like it. And um, I tend to go for ones that are like very personal. A lot of them are very personal stories told by the actual person, whether they remain anonymous or not, which I think all of them do, which is kind of the point. Um, just telling various stories about their life, love, uh, sadness. I like the tragedy ones. I I don't know what to say for myself. And um, it's like on the top charts too, but S-Town was really good. Like it, it's emotional though. Um, and my unplug, um, I've been getting awful tonsil stones, so I hate the fact that I have tonsils. I hate it. I, I hate it a lot. And, um, unplug United too, because we talked about that before, but I don't know if that'll even make it in the episode. So United is sucky, horrible, Mm -hmm. horrible. Um, but (laughs) It's funny enough that I recommended uh, my brother, my brother and me, because uh, Griffin McElroy, he was like, um, if you think that just because it's your property, you can drag someone off of it um, or something like that. He probably expand on that. Then uh, you belong in the sewer. (laughs) And he was like people he was replying to people like, great, nice opinion. Now you live in the sewer (laughs) and tweeting the pictures of sewers and. And this is the happy. front door to your and new home, the sewer. Yep, your new home. <laughs> he, yeah, that's wonderful. I guess you could check out his tweets and tweeter them, follow them, whatever. Yeah, we didn't actually give out our Twitter last oh, time. Shame. Oh, whatever. It's, it's at Ginger and Red Hot. If you didn't know. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, I maybe they know. I don't yeah. know. Then the the one the one person who stumbled in here and didn't know. That is our that is our Twitter. Hey guys, future Becca here in editing. Um, we actually changed our Twitter handle recently because I found out that Embrace Eternity was available. So um, now our new Twitter handle is at Embrace Eternity. So much easier than Ginger and Red Hot, which didn't really apply anymore since Cass no longer has red hair. I still have red hair, so I'm being true to the original twitter handle however can't expect that of Cass. she has to live her own life she has to go her own route anyways okay bye bye from the future bye bye from the future and um i've been putting up videos of my playthrough um mostly stuff that i wanted to see again um like my jaw romance and uh pb and i think i have veterans up too um at a elven tempest you can check me out and that's also my twitter but anyway uh, what did you do here? Unplug? Uh, nope. Mm, what's another shitty thing going on? Mm. There's a lot of shitty things going on. It's so hard to specify. Mm, the what is it? The concentration camps in Chechnya? Fuck that. <sighs> Chechnya, horrible. Um, unplugging horrible. that. Bastards. Unplugging it. It's the worst. Mm-mm. I told someone about that and they didn't believe me. They made me like source it and like, I'm like, okay, I looked at the source too. Whatever. People just don't want to believe that kind of stuff happens. And that's why when we talk about LGP, LG, LGP, LGBT stuff, it's like important to me because like, don't ignore that shit. It's a serious issue. Jesus. Yep. Jesus, people. Jesus. I had just made a post about Suvi and why I felt it was really important um, especially because she's depicted as a very religious person to like acknowledge publicly that she's like a lesbian and be upfront about it and not be like, well, she's, you know, I, I chose not to say that she is as her writer said, but like, I feel it's really important. Like don't make it a back seat thing, whatever that, that sounded weird, but I don't know. I just, it, it's important to me and obviously not as important as helping the people that are being tortured or murdered, but like we just, don't hide your gaze. We're beautiful. We're beautiful little unicorns. We're important. I don't know what to tell you. I know. But nobody believes us except for people who do. And they're good. And usually other. Yeah. Other LGBT. Much. Whatever. <laughs> God. <sighs> All right. This has been a lot. <laughs> we should end it on a positive note. 
Well, you know how I love to uh, bring everything down again. That's that's my one thanks. skill. My no. one true skill. Uh oh, um It's uh the weather's warming up. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> that's a good time. It's it's warming up. Go have yourself a snack. Mm. <laughs> that's me talking to everyone and myself. It's almost and popsicle you. time. Woo! Yeah. Oh god. Yep, that'd be good. And uh and get yourself a a little uh shaved ice. Mm. Yep, that's good. <laughs> get yourself a yummy that's shaved ice. Stuff. I like vanilla. I recommend vanilla. You like vanilla shaved ice? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like I do. the peach strawberry. I like bubble gum. I like oh that sounds good. Uh I wish they had butterscotch. That's right. That'd be good. Um, but bubble gum's real good. Um, yeah. Also, pineapple juice mm, is good. Yes, it is. So good. So pure. And don't drink too much, but it's also good for you. So take your vitamins, kids. I got to take my pill. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we end it. Okay. Okay. Bye. Take Bye. your pills. Yeah, take your pill. Bye.